How to make filthy coffee. My way. Filthy coffee. Get yourself a big old can of coffee grounds. In this case I'm going with the Maxwell House rich and dark whatever roast whatever. Coffee. So you get yourself some coffee. <clears throat> Then what you do is you get the necessary equipment and you may be saying to yourself what the fuck is this shit well that is a coffee cup Starbucks can go to hell I hate Starbucks but the coffee cups the right size let me tell you and uh, yeah so anyway coffee cup this dangerous substance and it is a dangerous lethal dangerous substance this is sugar and I'm very careful with sugar this little bottle right here I fill this bottle if this bottle goes empty from sugar usage in a month I'm having way too much sugar in my diet sugar is lethal dangerous stuff you have to do everything you can to avoid sugar it's filthy this stuff will kill you like you wouldn't believe and food companies they just love loading sugar into everything sugar and salt don't do that. However, I like a little bit of sugar in my coffee because of the way I make it. So, this coffee, this sugar right here, that's left over from December. And I'm into the first week of January, so I'm doing well. So what I do is, now hold on, what I do is I just undo the, uh, the dangerous explosive uh, cap like that. Put a little bit in the bottom of the coffee cup. A little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit. That's it. That's it. A little bit of sugar. See? That little sugar right there? That's it for sugar. Then, we get a filthy... This is actually a tea strainer. Tea. It's stained with coffee stains like crazy for obvious reasons. You know. In any case, if you look closely at it... Uh, it well, you can't tell. It's perforated with... Uh, really really tiny holes it's it's normally for straining tea like loose leaf tea then that Maxwell House coffee grounds great big can I don't keep that thing out in the open all the time that actually stays in the fridge yeah coffee grounds keep them in the fridge so I've got a cup here which is filled with let me just just got an elastic band and some saran wrap there there we go coffee grounds right there and I have an itty bitty teensy weensy tiny little this spoon I don't know it, it ain't a teaspoon I'll tell you that it's like maybe one half but I've got it figured out one two twa cat cinco I don't know what six is in any other language Septo, sept, seven. Seven of these little scoopers. Just do that, then there like that. And then, then what we need is to uh, recover that. I don't like uh, I don't like coffee grounds being exposed to air for very much, but it's okay at room temperature in small quantities. Okay, put that away and get boiled water. Because, you know, it, it doesn't get more simple, actually. This is, uh, without a doubt, far more information than the topic deserves. But this is how I make a cup of coffee. If you listen closely, there's a kettle boiling water. i got to do something about my fingers. Yeah, fingernails are messy. Typical guy. One moment, please. La, 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 la. The old Proctor Silex. And then, titrate the boiled water in there while stirring. Slowly. Slowly pour in the water and keep stirring, keep stirring, keep stirring. We want all those grounds. This is the exact same as basically boiled water 
dripping through coffee grounds and a paper filter. Except I'm not using a paper filter, I'm using that stainless steel tea filter. Keep on going slowly until we hit the absolute top edge. Whoa, hold on. I don't want it pouring out all over the. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, that's pretty darn full. That's it. Put the spoon down. And now comes the difficult part. Ignore it. Ignore that slurry. And that's what it is. I mean, this is... Oh, look at that. It says David's Tea on the, uh, on the handle. Right there, it says David's Tea. Give it a little stir. Just like that. And then, taking a look at some ridiculously fancy watch, you ignore it for five minutes. Give it the five minute, just ignore it. Okay? That's what it's going to do. This is the exciting part. I'm just going to walk away. Walk away and ignore it. What else is in the fridge? Hmm. Provolone cheese. Capicolo. Calabrese. Oh, we got some good stuff going on here, let me tell you. Going to be doing some kind of cooking today. What else we got? Let's see. I don't know what that is. I made it and I froze it. Oh. Let me tell you something. I don't do product endorsements. I really freaking don't. I don't exactly have what you call advertisement, but this company right here, okay, this, whatever it's called, 44th Street, I don't know where this comes from. It says Certified Angus Beef brand. Angus! It's got something to do with Scottish. I don't know why it's called Angus. I don't see any tartan anywhere, but what's inside this pack? is all of this uh, beef pot roast in rich gravy stuff slow braised uh, 575 grams, otherwise known as more than a pound for you Americans don't understand metric um, let me just take a look here you know let's see what does this say here for the bad stuff I don't care about calories. Saturated fats, trans fats, half a gram? Fuck it, I don't really care about that either. One gram of sugar, otherwise known as not much, with over 500 grams of stuff. But it says per one quarter. So multiply everything by four, because that's the tricky crap. The trick, 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 tricky crap is they love to show you one quarter or one half or one third or some crap like that. So then you got to multiply everything by four. So looking all the way down, when I see this iron down here, I'm thinking, hey, 2.5 times four. I can do that in my head. What is that? 10? Calcium, 40 milligrams. Potassium, yeah, I need that stuff. Apparently, I've got seriously low potassium. I don't know why. Anyway, 1.2 grams. Sodium, yeah, otherwise known as salt. Yeah, there's like two freaking grams of salt in there, which is, you know, a chunk. But I, you know, these things I go through maybe once in, what, a week? No, once in every two weeks, maybe. But what's it say here? Beef, gravy, water, sugar, dextrose, sugar, modified cornstarch, sugar, salt. Hydrolyzed corn, soy, and wheat protein. More, I don't, you know, spices. Uh, caramel color. What's that? Yellow dye number six. Flavor onion powder. You know, I've never really looked too hard at this. Garlic powder. Uh, parsley modified milk ingredients. Bit of cow, I guess. <clears throat> what else? Other stuff. Hmm. 
Never looked too closely at that. What I can tell you is, you know, I don't usually take much of anything out of a package. I do everything, you know, from scratch. But this is a great thing to mix in with, yeah, get yourself some carrots and potatoes, some scallions, and get yourself some celery, and get, you know, oh, it's fantastic once you do that stuff. Anyway, that goes back in the freezer. Oh, look at the time. Look at the time. How time passes. Hmm. Says to me, oh, that's been five minutes. Alrighty. So, take this out of here, and then slowly lift it while stirring. Just lift it out, lift it out, and what you've got there is coffee grounds, right? Nice and wet, just give that a press, the spoon, and then this stuff, these coffee grounds, you just toss them, easy enough, right? What you got there? That's called a cup of coffee, right there. Now, you end up with some uh, coffee grounds out on the edge, you know. If you're really sensitive to that kind of stuff, then what you do is you take a little bit of paper towel, not much, and you can just work the rim, just go around the rim if you want. I don't bother, you know, but somebody else would be making a cup of coffee for they'd lose their mind going like oh this is filthy coffee yes it's filthy coffee there it is one filthy coffee with a little bit of sugar nothing else there that's how I make a cup of coffee right there and that's why it takes me five minutes to make a cup of coffee but it's a good cup of coffee I'll tell you that it's got a great flavor to it anyway thanks for listening to the muttering